This visit to Kenwood House is very nice. Uh, I don't know about this family coach. I suppose your family didn't have a coach like this in Poland, did they? But it says that it's your family. The Ivor. <laughs> yes, it's the Earl of Ivor. He is Ivor. 1875. Actually, you know, my father was five years old when that coach was built. Mm. This was in Poland. No, my parents were Russian, and I was born in Poland while the war was going on. Then my family went to Germany, and I stayed there for a while, where I also entered the theater. This was the famous Berliner Ensemble Theater. Yes, it? yes. Uh, founded by Bertolt Brecht. And after his death, it was uh, uh, taken care of by Lena Weigel, who also plays all the leading roles in his place. Did you know Brecht yourself? No, mm. no, I never did meet mm. him. But what sort of an experience was it to be trained in such a famous theater as the Berlin Ensemble? Well, actually, I had a terribly hard time to be accepted there. I had to audition five times and finally forced them to look at me. And I invented a sort of one-act play which, of course, I didn't tell them I invented it, but it made me terribly nervous to learn lines at that early stage of my career. And um, so I thought it was much safer to invent it. And I had it all worked out before I went, and I then spoke my own dialogue, and it went very well. And after that, I was accepted into the ensemble. And from then on, uh, I decided that I would always speak my own dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> which is what you're doing this minute. I know you don't like to talk about it too much, but you did have a, you did have to escape by swimming across the river, didn't you? Yes, but I, I really rather forget about it. Mm. What happened to you when you got to the West? Then what did you do? Well, I was, in the first place, put into a refugee camp, and then got out of there, and because of people I knew in West Berlin. And I couldn't get a job in any theatre because it was a season and. Uh, all the plays were running, you know. So I decided to work as a fashion model. And this modeling firm called Östergaard went to New York for a big show where I had a sister. Presumably, you then arrived at Hollywood. No, I never went to Hollywood until years later. This was uh, something like 60, uh, 64, 64, yes. Mm. And, uh, no, 63. And um, I went to different Indian reservations, and I lived with the Navajo Indians in New Mexico for eight months. It's because I, I really can't think of another film actress who's led such an eventful life as you have, because you spent a lot of time in Spain. Yes. And not only did you appear on television programs, but you directed television programs, and you were a bullfighter for some reason. Now, can you sort of tell us something about your Spanish days? That was a brief madness within me when I was a bullfighter. I think you always have this in your life. Sooner or later, there's a brief period of, of, of uh, I don't know what you call it. It's just mad within you. It's got to come up or you suppress it for all your life, and then you are never really relaxed about your life. Were you trying to prove something about it? Sure, to life? myself, yes. Mm -hmm. I was always a coward all my life. I mean, I thought I couldn't face it, you know. So I, it's like a guy who hates heights. So he joins the paratroopers for a while, right. right, to just prove himself that he can get over it. I think it develops tremendous strengths within yourself. You can take a lot after that. Did you actually ride into the bullring in, in Yes, I did rejonear, as I call it, which is a Portuguese invented style of bullfighting, which you do on horseback. But I never did kill a bull. I also drove rallies in a car, and I gave that up. I just loved speed more than anything else. I loved it. I thought it was tremendous. And I gave that up when I had a tremendous fall, 80 feet with a car. Down it went, right? And I walked away from it. And I thought, well, I'm asking for too much if I try any more of these stunts. I quit. Because I was a stuntman, and uh, this is how I started films. Doing a stuntman? Yes. You were a stuntman? Standing there in a dress like that, you were a stuntman? <laughs> I happen to know that you've decided to settle here in London. Now, why, why have you picked London? You do a lot of shopping, do you? You spend. No, I, I despise to go shopping. I really can't bear it. I, this is why I have a very, you know, 
sort of little wardrobe. But it's so con time consuming, I'd rather sit and read my books, you know. This is what I do great shopping on. I mean, the book shops in, in London are marvelous. <laughs> hey, well, they're tremendous. You can get books here well, that are out of print for hundreds of years. Here you can get. I love to live in England because of all the possibilities in this country. I mean, you are so free, first of all. You, you can do and move about as you please. You can go to the theater. They have the best theater in England. They have any film you want to see, make, or be involved in, you can do it in England. I mean, England is just limitless. I find it like this. Anyway, I know there are quite a few people who don't share my views on England, but I like it. For me, after I have roamed all over the world, I find it here I want to stay. Here I will make my home.